The Valkyrie Cycle, a Monster Hearts 2 actual play podcast by Midnight Ceremonies Media. Episode number 9, Lick Your Wounds. Hey all, I'm Quinn, and I play Eden Grace on The Valkyrie Cycle, as well as doing music production for the show. Before we begin the episode, a few reminders. If you're tweeting or posting about the show online, please use hashtag the Valkyrie Cycle or hashtag TVC Spoilers to tag your content and to help us see anything you'd like to share with us. You can follow our official account at Midnight Sea Media on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for updates and additional information about this show and more. Finally, a warning that this season deals with heavy themes, including recurring and intense depictions of generational trauma, internalized homophobia, violence, and inter-party conflict. For episode-specific content warnings, please check the episode description or visit our website at midnightceremoniesmedia.com. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy episode number 9 of The Valkyrie Cycle, titled Lick Your Wounds. Peace. So, just like really quick, let's do a little rundown for everyone um, of like, we don't have to get in too much detail, but like, can, what condition is your character in? Um, and like, hey, what's their, what's like, like, are they in their darkest self? Like, what's their mental state right now? Like, I mean, let's not get too crazy, but like, let's just go from, from the top of the line. Um, we'll go along to what my computer has arranged all of you in. So Dia, you get to go first. How's, uh, how's our guy? How's Cassie? This is the greatest day of Cassie's life last few years. <laughs> okay, he's got one harm. He's in his darkest self. And the conditions he has right now are dead meat and one of them. Hey, Quinn, how's Eden doing? She good? Sitting pretty. She's good. <laughs> Zero conditions. Amazing. Love to hear it. Uh, Saffron. <laughs> how's Stephanie Chaplin? Um... Well, Stephanie is in her darkest self. Uh, she has another harm. This is one harm. Um, she has the condition above everyone. Uh, Cora gave that to her what feels like forever ago. Um, she has snake food and she has we're over from Cassie. Youch! Breakup of a century. Uh, <laughs> Victoria. <laughs> How's Sylvia doing? Sylvia has one harm, has condition prey from Starfire. Apparently, I only have one condition. I really thought I had more. You are still under the condition. Well, it's not an actual condition mechanically, but you are still oh, under Stephanie's hex. Oh, you have the, and you have the family condition. Yeah. Um, um, Karina. Caesar update. I mean, like game mechanics wise, he's good. Zero harm, I think. Uh, no conditions. Pretty good. Casey, how Starfire? Angry. That's not a condition. It's just a perpetual state of being. Um, but she does have the condition <laughs> snake food from Sylvia, and I don't think she has any harm. Yeah, I mean, if it's not written down, wouldn't have taken anything last but certainly certainly not the least percy what's up what's up with our boy oh you know him um <laughs> uh he still has the condition daddy's boy and snake food um and he's not doing you know his best i'd say i'd say we can adequately say that he's uh, in a little bit of distress, one one could one could surmise. So, with that all in mind, we return to the scene of the crime. Specifically, we return to the clearing in the woods, where Starfire, Lucian, and Cassie have sort of regrouped to the chosen squad, with Stephanie on the other side of the clearing her fucking wrecked car in between them. What's happening? What are you all doing? I think Starfire turns around to Cassie and Lucian and goes, what is your problem? Uh, Lucian will step in front of Cassie. 
And then be like, Cassie doesn't have any problems. Kindly explain to me what that was, because yet again, you left without me. Um, you almost killed her. And like, I get that that was the plan. I'm just at a bit of a loss at the moment. About a lot of things, so. Yeah, like what? Like how you can keep asking us questions when you still haven't explained shit. I offered to. Did you? Yeah, I did. And the offer stands once I know that I can trust you, Lucian, because you keep running off and leaving me to deal with your shit. I had to convince an entire fucking diner full of people that they had carbon monoxide poisoning because you turned into a wolf outside in full view of everybody and because i care about you i tried to fix it but i can't always keep fixing it we are putting people in danger your actions have consequences starfire when have i ever asked you to clean up any of my messes you have it but i will yeah. anyways because otherwise people are going to get hurt I don't want to be mad at you. I really don't want to be mad at you, Lucian. I want to be on your side. Please make it easier for me to be on your side. Okay. Then can we just leave and go somewhere else? What are we going to do with her? She needs medical attention, Lucian. And like, I get that she's awful, but she's... Stephanie's kind of like disassociate like she's not aware of what's going on i don't think caesar and eden two of you are pulling up in caesar's car when you see the wrecked car it is still standing the windshield is shattered there's a huge dent in the side and there's glass spread out among the snow along with quite a bit of blood and as you're pulling up, slowing down, hitting the brakes, Sylvia, you also see the same thing coming from a different direction. Um, did you did you actually want to go in and check out the scene? I actually don't didn't ask, but uh, last time, do you want to go check it out? Honestly, yeah. Sylvia's gonna go. Sylvia's gonna go investigate. You're like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> Sylvia's really in a place like I know magic is real, but what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Amazing. Anymore. Yeah, so like about the same time that Caesar and Eden are like pulling up and starting to get out of the car, uh, Sylvia, you are also like approaching this clearing. You see, you pull up uh, to the clearing, trudging in through the snow, and uh, you also see the blood coloring the snow. Stephanie sort of huddled against a tree on one side. A huge fucking wolf on the other, next to Lucian and Starfire, and Caesar and Eden getting out of a car literally across from you. This whole time, a oh, wolf Cassie has not been meeting Starfire's eyes and has been like, as Starfire and Lucian talk, has been like pacing around the two of them, like digging his paws into the snow, like all of his muscles tensed up. And when he hears the car pull up, his head snaps to it. And he's just like watching. Eden's going to make eye contact with Cassie. And then really quickly flash his eyes around the whole scene, taking it all in. What the fuck happened? What are you doing here? No, 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 no. Well, is Caesar also like out of the car? Yes. Starfire looks kind of deer in the headlights desk. Lucian just smiles at Caesar. Hi. Hey. Is everybody calm? Calm? Okay. I'd say I'm pretty calm. Eden, I thought you were going back to school. I did. Caesar convinced me that I was more needed here. All right, I feel like, I feel like 
There's a lot of shit. I feel like an explanation on. is in order. Okay, sure. Lucian? Let's call the... Yeah, I'll explain. Let's call the girl, the girl in ambulance and leave. That's what you want, isn't it? So she doesn't die and you want an explanation from me, so why don't we call a fucking ambulance and then go somewhere else? Because you know what she's going to tell the ambulance? That she was attacked by a wolf. Oh, and? You cannot honestly not know the answer to that question. Is the hex still affecting the way Sylvia views this situation? <laughs> oh my god. My god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a question. This is kind of a fucked up situation that Sylvia doesn't know what's happening. But also, her brain's been fucked with. So she's not yeah. even seeing things correctly. Oh my what? god. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. The hex is affecting how you see this. Because you sp- sort of spent the last like day-ish and like the morning seeing like all these like weird signs and hearing these like rumors and stuff and just like vague allusions to Stephanie having already found someone to move on with and she just so quickly so easily cut Sylvia out of her life and found someone else and as you walk up to this scene and you look around you see that Stephanie is there and you see that Starfire and Lucian are there and Sylvia doesn't know that Cassie's a werewolf so you wouldn't put it together that 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 the wolf there is Cassie. But as you're looking around, you can tell that there are clearly two sides here and that Cassie's best friends are mad at Stephanie about something. And the thought occurs to you that the reason Stephanie never let you in closer than she did was because there was always someone else. And why would Cassie's best friends be here and Stephanie hurt like that? Why would they be upset with her? Because she moved on from you with the person that was always between you. Sylvia is gonna kind of rush up to Stephanie. Sylvia? She's gonna like kind of hesitate with putting a hand on Stephanie's shoulder. What are you doing here? Who... Who did this? <laughs> who has blood on their hands? Lucian from like 20 feet away just waves at Sylvia. Um, okay. Sylvia is gonna get up, full on sprint towards Lucian, jump in the air, turn into her true form so she's a six foot snake and bite Lucian's neck. We left love. (laughs) Okay, so Sylvia, you now can roll to uh, lash out physically. I I do, I do have snake food. Yeah, okay, great. Well then, hapless price though. That was a 10 plus three, so that's 13. 13? 13? Yeah. Yeah, so on a 10 and up, you deal them harm, and they choke up momentarily before they can react. So you take the full brunt of this, which is, uh, you take another harm, you take a point of harm, as a giant snake sinks its teeth into your neck. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna use a, um, what is it? A faithful move, uh, called Stigmata, 
um, which means that uh, when someone inflicts harm in your presence and you do not have the condition drained, you may spend a string on them or gain the condition drained to have them take the harm as well. Um, so uh, some real fun that's going to happen is uh, when s Snake bites into... I also don't... Do I have string? I don't think I have any strings on. <laughs> Sophia. No, I have one string on you, though. Vibe. Okay, then I will take the condition drained. <laughs> that you're gonna take the harm as well. So, as soon as the snake bites down on Lucian's neck, um, two massive holes are, uh, also appear on the neck of the snake, and blood starts gushing out of the snake as well. Um, in the exact same spot in the neck that the snake pierced Lucian. As you do that, um, as the snake bites down into you and the magic sort of reflects, and Sylvia, you also take a point of harm, um, Lucian, you can feel your energy drain and you feel really tired because of your condition, new condition. And the, the result from that 13 still stands you have you choke up for a moment and you freeze it's like this just wave of exhaustion hits you uh so does anyone else want to do anything in this moment right as the snake bites into lucian chain out now <laughs> okay yeah i want to grab it and drag it back away from lucian like wrap the chain around and pull well cool. yeah i will say that you can you can uh, you can drag Sylvia off of Lucian and Sylvia you can feel the as this chain gets around you all of you can hear like this like sizzle and burn as the chains touch the snake's skin Sylvia is going to let out a long and loud like hiss of like pain. For a second, Starfire's not seeing Sylvia there. She's seeing the page from Morgan's storybook with the snake. And she like plants her feet and grabs the chain and holds really tight. Can Sylvia like move in this? What do you want to do? Like get out of it? Like whip around almost to try and bite yeah. Starfire. Yeah, you can try and do that. That's an 11 plus three because that'd be lashing up physically. Oh my um, fucking plus god. Three. So that's 14. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> On a 10 and up, you deal them harm and they choke up momentarily before they can react. Okay. As like this chain is wrapped or is like being wrapped around you and you're being dragged back off of Lucian, you whip around and sink your teeth into Starfire's shoulder and Starfire. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if Starfire's ever been bitten by a snake before. Um but I think that in this moment, you can tell that it is, this is more than a normal snake bite. Uh, as Sylvia sinks her teeth into you, it's, it's like it's burning and you can like, you get just like this sense inside of you like as you're holding onto the chain and you can feel it burning Sylvia's flesh it's like she's reflecting that onto you like their bite is like the chains that you have on them and well this is one of your enemies am I able to use the strange impressions move as a main character to just harm me or is the choke up momentarily enough to stop that I think the choke up momentarily is enough to stop that. Got, got it. Okay, then uh, Starfire just kind of slumps to her knees and keeps trying to hold on, but vision kind of blurs. Yeah, can Wolf Cassie sink his teeth into the snake and try to rip it off Starfire? <laughs> yeah, 
Um, also, Starfire, you take a point of harm. Does Sylvia take a, a point of harm from the chain? How much harm are you at right now? I'm at two currently. So, <laughs> so like, survival-wise, prefer not, but I feel like reality-wise, it's wrapped around me, burning my skin. <laughs> and the sole purpose for biting Starfire was an escape fight or flight response of fight get this off of me I'll s- yeah okay okay I'll say that as as you when, when you bite into starfire that choke up momentarily is like just enough to slacken the chain st- just a little bit enough that you can slip out of them just in time for a giant wolf to try and attack you Uh, I've got, I got an eight, so that's a mixed success. Eight total? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna let the DM decide how bad the harp turns out. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Live. Dia, you're everything to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so just really quick, what is, Ka- what is Cassie trying to do? Um, well, he's in his darkest self and he wants blood. So he's just gonna sink his teeth in as deep as he can because um, she has just hurt the two people that he has sacrificed something very big to protect. And he's just gonna bite and he's gonna tear. So. (laughs) I see. Okay. So I feel like under normal circumstances, wherein a true success in your darkest self Cassie is going for blood. And so what I'm going to say is that I think normally this would do more than one harm. But because Sylvia is also a giant snake and you are distracted by the fact that Starfire has just sunk to her knees in pain, your bite doesn't get in maybe where it would be most effective and so you try and rip up at the snake but as Sylvia's blood fills your mouth you can still see Starfire there not moving so Sylvia you take one harm Eden's going to walk into the clearing like further in um Stepping, like, in between Stephanie and this whole scuffle going on. Turning his body to face. Like, turning his back to Stephanie. And is just going to yell, Everybody fucking stop! Sylvia, what the fuck are you doing? Are you content being Stephanie's attack dog? Is that all you are? This is insane. Y'all are fucking teenagers. And um, as Eden says that, can I use the move Home Life, which the details of it is when a monster sees what a normal life you have, they choose. They gain the condition monstrous you gain the condition delicious, or you carry one forward to making them feel human. Yes. What? Yeah, Eden. Good move, good move. move. So, okay. This is specifically directed at Sylvia. Okay. So, Victoria, choose. You choose if, you choose to gain the condition monstrous, or Eden gets the condition delicious. Or Eden can carry one forward to making you feel human. Oh my god. What Eden is doing in this moment is putting themselves in between the violence and Stephanie. And they are deliberately making themselves vulnerable in an attempt to get this to stop. Okay. Let me know if this makes sense. Like, I don't know, story character-wise. Um, Sylvia's 
we're going to choose gaining the condition monstrous and Sylvia is also going to go into her darkest self. Yes, you can do that. You gain the condition monstrous. And really quick, uh, can you read the darkest self for the serpentine? You aren't ever going to be able to reconcile the human and serpent worlds. You can't live with the lies and insanity any longer. You need to reject one side or the other to escape this madness. Run the fuck away, hide, return to the bosom of your serpent family, or abandon them entirely for the human world. You'll threaten, hobble, or destroy anyone who tries to keep you enmeshed in contradictory obligations. You escape your darkest self when you submit yourself to the old obligations once more, and you shed your past life in an integrate yourself into a new family. Okay. I just realized the implications of this. So, okay. Yeah, you absolutely can go into your darkest self in this moment. Are you rejecting your family and choosing humanity? Or are you going to return to your family? We're returning. We're going back to the family. Okay because the family makes sense this is madness this is teenager emotional bullshit and sylvia is a god and sylvia knows this and sylvia is like i don't need this you're right eden i'm a monster so i'm gonna go be with my monsters and be a monster so sylvia is gonna let go of starfire because i imagine this whole time well, Cassie's been, like, trying to pull her off. She's still been holding on to Starfire. Um, and they're gonna go back into their human form. Just because it's easier to travel. They're gonna walk up to Eden. Just go. Thank you. And then walk away. Okay. As you do that, uh, probably all of you notice, or those of you who are watching would notice that Sylvia, when you transformed, you dropped the book. Do you pick it back up as you leave? Okay. You all see Sylvia pick up a book with an old leather cover with runes, like Nordic runes carved into it. And she turns and walks away. What do the rest of you do? I am running over to Starfire and immediately checking to see if she's okay. <laughs> like, oh, like holds, holds hers. She like so dizzy. Yeah, I think she kind of leans more into you than she wants to and goes, my head really hurts. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Um, fuck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, and then he like, Lucian would then just like look over at Caesar and be like, can we please, can we, lo- can we get, can, can we load in your yes, car, please? Yes. yes yeah course okay. yeah. good uh, um. Lucian with his strength is gonna pick up Starfire <laughs> and start walking towards the car Starfire will stumble to her feet but then as soon as they're up like dude we Cassie the shit are we gonna do y'all can go I can handle it Lucian will look at Cassie it's what time it's it's oh fuck because you have to wait lucian would know for darkest self you have to wait till morning right and it's already morning yeah it's still like it's i mean like getting into early afternoon but yeah cassie's gonna be like this all night unless they wound someone they care about which is the the thing right okay Mm -hmm. because because werewolves um Mm -hmm. here's here's the thing Eden will approach Cassie. Uh, once, once Sylvia started walking away, all um, uh, Wolf Cassie's done is like he's snarling and his ears are back and he's just watching. He's like pacing back and forth. He's not advancing towards Sylvia, but he's watching and making sure she's leaving. So he he he's his attention's not on anything except the uh, person leaving the scene. Mm-hmm. Eden will approach Cassie and gently put a hand on her face, like kind of under the uh, under the jaw a little bit. It's like it's okay. 
I'm here. Cassie doesn't push it away, but his 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 attention on the Sylvia does not break. He's like he he's like peering around Eden. He's like it's it's he he knows that they're there, but it's not his his focus is somewhere else entirely. They're not a problem anymore. He just growls. Cassie's wolf form is like about the same height as Eden is right now, right? So Eden will kind of like lean in and kiss Cassie right on the forehead and just hug her. I know it will take time, but it's fun. We'll get through this. Is Stephanie Chaplin actively bleeding out on the ground? <laughs> so this has been a lot for Stephanie. I just rolled to run away to see if Stephanie could have disappeared from the scene. And I got a six. Well, mark that experience. So I think really Stephanie's gotten up. It's not necessarily that she's bleeding out, but her ribs, um, her ribs are definitely broken. So I think she's stood up from like where she was like at this tree slumped and she like was trying to get up to get away. And she's just like kind of collapsed again and is holding her side and is like, if anyone looks over at her is just kind of like hunched in a ball. Can I actually walk over to Stephanie? Yeah. I'll be, I'll be gentle about it. Um, I'm just gonna be like, hey, Stephanie, oh my God, are you okay? I mean, obviously you're not okay, but. <sighs> when did you, how, why are you, why are you here? Hey, you know, that's not important right now. What's important is that we get you some help. Do you, you probably need an ambulance, right? You no. Know? Okay, well, you know, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure it out. You know, all you need to worry about right now is, and then I wanna use the move hypnosis and I wanna look Stephanie in the eyes and I wanna say, don't cast any more hexes on anyone here in this clearing again until I tell you you can. Go ahead and roll. That is a eight plus two. That is a 10. Okay. That's my fucking boyfriend right there. Oh, God. <laughs> Stephanie doesn't even question how Caesar knows about her magic. She just nods and goes, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that it hasn't really, it's not really, magic's not really helping anything. Yeah, it's for the best, you know? Some people just have the knack for it and some people don't, it's okay. It was really fucking good. It's well, just, you know. Nothing's come my way. That just happens to some people. I'm sorry to hear that. Taylor's broken. What? Oh, your car? Yeah. I don't think, I don't think I could drive it. Probably not. I wanna call my mom. Okay, yeah, I'll give you privacy to do that. Please don't, can you not go? Can you stay? I mean, yeah, I can stay for a little bit, sure. Everyone else has left me, Caesar. You're the only one I have left. I'm sure that's not true. Oh, it's true. Everyone has left. But you came over and you made sure it was okay. Yeah. 
What are friends for? And Stephanie will call her mom. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you dial your mom. She picks up like second ring and says, Hey, sweetheart. Aren't you supposed to be in school? What's up? Mommy, um, I, I kind of, um, so I got into a car crash and like, you know, I didn't make it to school. Um, what? Where are you, honey? Where, where are you right now? Uh, Did you call the police? Did you call 911? Uh, well, it's, uh, it was with a wolf. I hit a wolf. What? And it, uh, it attacked me. I, I think it's better to just- Oh my God, are you okay? Person. Where are you? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I'm really not okay. Okay, is the, is the, is the wolf still there? Stephanie, <laughs> like, looks over at the- <laughs> Sapphire is like, looks like <laughs> Caesar's also shaking his head. <laughs> nope. No, no, it's not here still. It left. Okay, are you in the car? Are you in your car? No, it's. Okay, Stephanie, get inside your car right now and stay there until the police get there. I'll call 911 right now. No, and I'll no, be on, no, and I'm on my no. way. Can you just pick me up? Abs, Stephanie, no, stay where you are. You have your location <laughs> services on, right? Stay yeah. where you are, and I'll be there as soon as I can. And she hangs up. We got to get out of here. We, yeah, the cops are on the way right now. <laughs> I'm running to. Ca- I'm running to Cassie. <laughs> Cass, what are we gonna do? Oh, Lucian runs up to Cass. Yeah, Duh. yeah, we. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we gotta get you out of here. Lucian looks at Cass and is like, Cass? Can you turn back? I know how you get out of it. I'm fine. It just bite me again if you need oh, to. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. You know, you have to. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Either of us or both of us. Cass is like, just, he's just, he's just, he's shaking his head and he's like backing away from the thing. He's like, he's, he's, <laughs> he can't do that. He can't, he doesn't take off. He, he. He gestures towards the car and he like starts backing towards the woods. Okay. Cassie, you can't run. You can't run. Please. You have to stay with us. You can't run. Please, Cass, please. Can I have Cassie to roll to keep his cool? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I got a, a that's a seven. That's a cool seven. You partial success. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, on a seven to nine, the MC will tell you how your actions would leave you vulnerable and you can choose to back down or go through with it. So I'll be completely honest with you right now, Cassie. If you stick around, the police will show up because you cannot get in that car and there is only one way for you to turn back to a human right now. And that's by hurting one of your friends. And if you don't do that and you stay, the police will show up and they will see a girl having been attacked by a wolf and they will see you who is a wolf and they will put the pieces together. The only other way out of this is running. Cassie's just gonna, he just, he just whines <laughs> low. Like he can't say, he can't say words right now, obviously, but it's like, it's like an apology. And he, he no. takes off into the no, woods. I'm- I, Lucian, no. Oh, fuck, no, Lucian's gonna try and like just like hug onto Cassie and and then just like whisper in his ear, just like just do it one more time. It's fine. This was my fault in the first place. Just do it one more time. It's just it's just my fault, Cass. He's Cass. gonna shake. No, he's gonna just try to shake Lucian off. Cass, if you're gonna go, can I come with you? Please. I mean, it makes him hesitate. Okay, listen, there's either you're going to hit one of us or we're coming with you. There's not a be by yourself option. It seems like that goes badly. Yeah, the wolf Cassie 
nods. Starfire throws out the chain and does their little team move of hopping on Cassie's back and using the chain as reins. Where are you guys going to go? Where are we? Well, okay, where can we meet you? Morgan's? Maybe Morgan's. All, all, where are you going to take Steph? Is Stephanie staying here? One of you has to be here when the cops show up. I think we can't, you have to, it can't have been a wolf attack. It has to be something else. Okay, I'll make it something else. Fucking bear. Bear. There are bears in these parts anyways. Yeah. Okay, are you guys good? Uh, I'm getting on with you. I look down at Cassie. Yeah, he's just he's just waiting for someone to tell him to go. He's not going to say anything else. His eyes are on the ground. I hold out my hand to Eden. Yeah. Eden pull. takes it. Pull Eden up behind me. Like, you know, when two people are riding a horse, it's a thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then turn to look at Caesar and and Lucian. All right, where are we meeting you? In a bit, I assume. I mean... Also, hi, Mr. President. Pleasure seeing you <laughs> under these circumstances. Hi. Yeah. Starfire. Eden just looks at Starfire quizzically. Star Starfire has a glint of the causing problems on purpose back in her <laughs> eyes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll take care of things. Okay. Lucian, you got it? Sounds good to me. Um, Lucian will like just hug Cassie one more time before uh, stepping off and away and next to Caesar and Stephanie. Okay, Lucian, you got it? Yeah, I'm gonna clean up one of my own messes for once, Star. Please take care of Cassie and make sure that they're all right. I got you. Uh, I reach into like my back pocket. I fully have the radios on me and I throw one at Lucian. This time Lucian. you're taking the fucking radio. Okay? Okay. Lucian catches it and then um, before Starfire leaves, we'll run over and uh, hug her quite tightly um, and is like whispers just to Starfire. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I've been such a fucking wreck lately. Um, I owe you and I know I want you to know that I know that I owe you and um, I promise I'm going to fix this. Okay. Um, us, I promise. I just, I care about you. So yeah, that's it. Fuck. We've added emotions. Anyways. Uh, oh, hold then, on. Um, <laughs> Starfire reaches out and then maybe one of the first times she's ever initiated physical contact with Lucian puts a hand on his shoulder and goes, I'll tell you everything. Just let's fix this first. And then Lucian is like, I'll tell you everything as well. And then walks off to Caesar. I will I will say the whole time that that little exchange is happening, uh, Cassie uh, has looked towards Caesar and he he's just watching and he's just looking and it's only it's only when Lucian starts walking back to Caesar that he breaks the eye contact and then like shifts his aunt legs and is, gets ready to go into the forest. Cool. So the three of you, Cassie, Eden, Starfire, run off into the woods and you're heading towards Morgan's cabin. I think we're taking a nice long detour, but yes. Okay. As they're on the way, Eden, I don't know, speaks up and says, you sure you're okay? Are you not dizzy? Do you want, I, I can help. No, it's good. It's good. I've done this a lot. Dude, we should probably get you water at least. As we're racing on a wolf through the forest. You know, water... Yeah. I mean, I mean, I just you... Eden still has his bag. <laughs> Please do not do not turn around to go just I I can hang on for 10 minutes. Do not worry about it. 
frankly, I am a lot more worried about Stephanie Chaplin. Cassie's Cassie's not going slow, but he's like taking more care than he usually would because he know that he knows that Starfire is wounded. I don't know. There's a lot of this. It's a lot of what the fuck was that, and I don't know, and then a run, and then a little bit of downtime, and then a what this the is, fuck is that, and then an I don't. It's. I mean, this is the stuff that you're dealing with. This is fucking teenager shit. <laughs> One in the same, my friend. Why did you come? You said you'd stay as far away as you could. Why didn't you? I came for Caesar. For Caesar? Moral support, as it were. And I came for Cassie. Moral support, as it were. Hi, friends. And Caesar came for Lucian? Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing I can't handle. Eden, there's something everyone can't handle. I'm not saying I'm underestimating you. Because I wouldn't. I'm scared of you a little bit in a good way. <laughs> I don't get comp- I don't get the computer science kids, quite frankly and clearly. <laughs> you know something there that I don't. But just don't get yourself in over your head, okay? There's too many of us down here already. We c- we're, we'll cut back to um, the clearing. Uh, what do you guys, okay, you have like maybe 10 minutes to do something oh God. before Shit, what? people show up. Jen. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, fuck. Cool. Stephanie's gonna stay where she is and sit down. Cause she's like, okay. Lucian's gonna look at Caesar. Lucian? Oh, or Stephanie. Oh God. Ste- wait, Lu- hold yeah, on. Sure. Lucian will look on. at Stephanie. Stephanie is, 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 it's sinking in that the two people left with her right now are Caesar and Lucian. Mm-hmm. 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 Lucian, why are you still here? Uh, good question. Um, well, I don't, uh, I have friends who are werewolves and i don't want them getting fucked over because of You're a uh, werewolf. something i did so you did um, this to me yeah uh-huh so what but when you tell people that wolves do things other wolves get hurt not just me so if you want to help out and make sure people that you and i care about don't get fucking killed maybe you could lie a little bit okay do something good and or useful maybe even helpful towards another person because cassie is a werewolf right now. okay i know i just hate you and i hate that you're right cool caesar should we do something about the all of the shit that's around. Yeah, like the the teeth, probably. Mm-hmm. No, I want. Mm-hmm. Give, give me that. I want. Let me. Come on. They're my mm-hmm. fucking no. teeth, bro. Jesus, and Lucian's gonna teeth? start picking them up. Gross. Lucian's picking Can them I up like kick the teeth towards Lucian and away from Stephanie? <laughs> I'm not touching them though. Lucian's picking them up and taking them. <laughs> At some point, can Starfire radio in because I'm sure it's snowing and be like, hey, remember to like fuck up the wolf tracks that are leading out of here so they don't follow those? Uh, copy. <laughs> and then Lucian will... Um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whisper into Starfire's ear, and the snake tracks. And the snake tracks. I, snakes are a fucking tube. I don't know. Do your best. Out. <laughs> <laughs> snakes are a tube. Um, yeah. We should all just generally try and fuck up the snow if he can. 
yeah around the wolf tracks. yeah also the yeah. just the general footprints of a lot of people being here that are no longer here <laughs> yeah 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 you can do that i mean basically like what you have to do to like erase tracks it's not going to be perfect but you just have to like walk and then walk like walk backwards and mess it up as you go as you walk behind so that the snow is like clear and your footprints aren't there either and you can do that doing that is stephanie chaplin on the ground still where what what is stephanie chaplin doing i think she's moping illusion will walk over to stephanie and be like can you walk no because you fucking broke my ribs Okay, just checking. Good to know. And then continue to <laughs> fuck up the track. Uh, is Caesar saying anything to Lucia? <laughs> this is happening. Yeah, like uh, maybe when they're like clearing shit on the other side of the clearing away from Stephanie, um, he'll just like quietly be like, hey, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we got breakfast and then, um, mm-hmm. yeah, and then Cassie ran away. Uh, and then Stephanie released the spell on me for some reason. And mm. I made a few decisions that have led me here. Are you doing anything tonight, by the way? No, what? Would you be free around, say, 10 p.m.? Yeah, I guess, yeah. I just have this uh, one last piece of business I need to take care of. Um, this one's pretty settled to me uh, at the moment. Um, I feel like once we get Stephanie into the hospital, it'll be, you know, kind of done putting in energy to this person and situation, so. Um, but, uh, if you're not doing anything, um, sort of called my dad, uh, this morning, um, updated him about my life generally. Um, and so I'm gonna go back home at around 10 and, um, do some of the things that I uh, talked about doing. If you want to come with. Yes. Yes. Sorry, you gave him advance warning, though? Um, I was in a bit of a state. Uh, yeah, realizing it maybe wasn't the best um, idea to do that. Um, you know, I mean, technically we could, we could still, um, I didn't say I was going to go kill him. I just said, uh, you know, like, we just said we'll talk at 10 p.m. Um, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it definitely sounded like that because you're the most subtle person I know. <sighs> yep, you know me. Uh, hey, we could go earlier. And 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 try. Oh, this is sounding so bad, isn't it? This sounds just all of it, all of the above sounds stupid. I would. This was a stupid move. I just was really excited um, to be able to say whatever I wanted to him, kind of. Uh, and I didn't think about other things um, in the moment, other than just getting to to do to do that. I mean, that's, that's clear, but Mm -hmm. it'll be okay. Yeah. You're better at this than I am. What do you suggest? I'm better at patricide? No, I just mean you're um, smarter than I am. (laughs) Uh, And you're better at situations and taking people down. Um, as much as I'm the one that, you know, has the muscle or whatever, I feel like you know how to ruin people if you want to. So what's the move? I mean, I have thoughts. Run through me 
what's important when you're doing this? Um, is him. it just you want him dead, or is it important that you be the one to do it? Yeah, both. Okay, great. What what outcome do you want from this? It's never been this real before, okay. I think. So I don't really know. I've sort of been thinking about it for too long and now that it's happening, I lost my footing, I think. Biggest fantasy of how this goes. How do you want it to go? Do you have thoughts? I want to make this as enjoyable for you as possible. Do you want him silent? Do you want him to beg? Do you just want it to be organic and let what happens happen? I'd like to be able to talk to him first, I think, while it's happening. I don't think I care if he can answer or not. I'll feel it out in the moment, you know? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. About this time, I'm sorry, I do have to stop you. <laughs> yes! <laughs> um, because I did put a, a 10 minute time limit. And so about this time, you probably can hear the sirens uh, getting close to the scene. Also, I'll remind you, Stephanie has been sitting against a tree doing that entire thing. She's on the, Wait, other, side on the other side of the clearing. No, I said on okay. the other side of the clearing. Okay. I said we were all quiet. Right. Too. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We're just, we're just, we're just, it's, but, but Stephanie does see us whispering very closely and like sensually to each other <laughs> from across the clearing. We're fucking up the snow and we're just talking. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. Why do I feel like Stephanie has shit gaydar, though? I feel like she has no clue. I feel like yeah. she does not get it. She also <laughs> does. She I didn't know with Kate. Like, she kind of guessed with Caleb, but didn't. No, she's really bad at this. She did. She her gaydar is really. She's so her gaydar is so bad. She didn't realize she was gay. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think Stephanie's just sitting and watching. There was there's things she would do if Caesar hadn't very politely uh, told her not to cast hexes on anyone. But she's just she's just, so she's just chilling. Okay, cool. Um, as the sirens sound, uh, Lucian will like lean lean into Caesar a, a little bit, a lot. Um, and then and the, like like put his hand like on the like back of Caesar's head and just be like talk about this later and then um, step back and then <laughs> um, and then try and it's so bad but try and straighten his appearance a little bit as in like like put his tuck his shirt back in um, <laughs> run his hand through his hair you know look better and like and Caesar help him do that I don't want him to look like shit when the cops get here you guys are just like honestly if it had been anyone other than Stephanie they would have put this shit together like because everything you say is just like gay gay homosexual gay <laughs> um. but yeah, yeah yeah I was gonna also say like so like is the story a bear? What is the story? The st yeah, the story is the story the story is we don't know shit. We just know that it was a that we saw a wild a animal running away. Should right? we not you know say that it's not a wolf? Yeah, we'll say definitely not. We'll say bear. Yeah, let's go with bear. Let's go with bear. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with bear. But we we don't know shit. We just came upon it. Yeah. We just came upon it. Why are we it. out here? Um, we're, uh, 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 you know, um, <laughs> we're, we're skipping together, um, being mischievous, uh, uh, youths, um. Okay, never mind, never mind, I'll do the talking. No, I can help, it's fine, I'm good. No, I can do the talking. 
Yeah, I mean that's a that's a va- we just we were going to Let me make out in the woods. The that's talking. normal, right? People do Let that. Let me do that's the talking. Thing. Let me do the talking. It's fine. Okay, cool. We'll we'll wait for them to get out of the car. Yeah, yeah. So single squad car pulls up um with an ambulance right behind it. Uh you see that actually this is a familiar face to you, Percy, who steps out. Deputy uh George Thomas, the guy who came to the hospital to ask you questions when you got attacked by a bear uh, several months ago. Uh, hey, well, and, he knows it then. He knows he made his old hat to this guy. Uh, and, you know, his, like, another, like, officer with him steps out. Um, both these, like, 30-something white guys in, uh, uniforms um ambulance pulls up behind them you see that immediately two paramedics get out with a stretcher and they just like immediately rush over to stephanie um and uh i think deputy thomas comes over to the two of you and the other police officer sort of like walks along with stephanie but kind of like almost immediately judges that she cannot be questioned at the moment um and, uh, but he does say, as you're like being loaded up, Stephanie, that you see that this police officer uh, says to you, um, uh, your mom is waiting for you at the hospital. So you'll okay. be with her soon. Okay. Is, uh, are they coming? Are those, uh, is Caesar coming? Uh, would you like any, either of them to ride in the ambulance with you? I don't want, I, can I, I would like Caesar to ride with me. I'll go ask him really quick. And he like pats the stretcher like next to your hand and, and you see that uh, George Thomas has like come over to you and um, has, is like, uh, okay. Um, hi, George, Deputy George Thomas. Um, I mean, first question, what are the two of you doing out here? Uh, The call we got was that there was just one girl alone in the woods. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm Caesar. I uh, am Stephanie's friend. Um, She just, you know, she snapped me in a panic. I was, I wasn't feeling well. I was on my way home already, actually. So I wanted to come see her. And, uh, Aster, right, Lucian? Uh, yep. I was, um, tagging along, uh, with Caesar. I didn't want him to be alone, because he was not feeling well. Uh, so I wanted to come with him. (coughs) Okay, cool. Uh, do... Can either of you tell me what happened or what you saw, if anything? I mean, when we came here, Stephanie and her car were already uh, pretty wrecked. Uh, We didn't see a lot. We saw, what was maybe, we think a bear? Okay, and neither of you called the police? We were checking on Stephanie. The service out here isn't very good. Also, after we checked on her, she told us that she called someone, so we assumed that that was all right. See, we only got here just recently, so. Okay, okay. Uh, He looks like he's about to say something else when the other guy comes up and looks at you, Caesar, and says, uh, or looks at the two of you, because I guess he doesn't know, and says, uh, which one of you is Caesar? Hey, yeah, it's me. Um, uh, Miss Chaplin wants you to ride in the ambulance with her, if you are willing to do that. Um, do you have any more questions, officer? Uh, Thomas just says, um, <clears throat> well, not at the moment, but, uh, if we need anything, obviously we'll reach out. Right. Of course. Will be available. 
Alrighty. He, like, starts heading back to the squad car and, like, grabs, like, caution tape. Uh, do you go in the ambulance? Yes, but I will give my keys to Lucian so he can <gasps> mm. leave. Yeah, I'll follow you to the hospital in the car. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, I get to drive the Bentley. Uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> Lucian, Lucian will, like, uh, give uh gives Caesar a quick kiss and be like, alright, I'll be back soon. Um and goes to the Bentley. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, you guys head to the hospital. Um you I, you get there like really quickly. Um the ambulance has the lights on and they're speeding. Uh so presumably Lucian, Lucian you're gonna show up like a little bit later. Uh, if you're following tra- traffic laws. Um, do Stephanie and Caesar talk in the back of the ambulance? Can I hold your hand? Mm-hmm. Why were you... Why were you talking to Lucian? Uh, you know, we're in a lot of stuff together. We don't have a lot of time to catch up. I thought you hated him. No, I, yeah, I do. He's not, he's not coming, right? I don't, I don't want him anywhere near me. I don't know. You know how he is. He just does what he does. But, Hey, you know what? I'll be there. And you can talk to me. Thank you, Caesar. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fucked up. Like, everything's so fucked up. Oh, yeah? Like what? I just realized, um... Stephanie's in her darkest self, and when she's in her darkest self, her eyes are red. Oh, God! <laughs> Do the paramedics, like, think that there's something wrong with her eyes? Um, because there's no, there's, it's no hiding it. Yeah, I mean, like, I've never been in the back of an ambulance, so I don't know what paramedics do besides just, like, put people in there and then take them to the hospital. They usually get them on I, IV. They, like, take your, they, like, take your vitals, right? Take the, oh, vitals, usually, like, couple minutes in, like, intervals. The vitals happen a lot, might have okay. an IV. And... Yeah, so they definitely would have noticed your eyes, but there's not anything they can do about it. They've just, like, noticed it. So they definitely think you have some sort of, you could be high? Or you like could, burst blood like vessel in your eyes. Yeah, that's yeah. probably what they what they think. Like they probably you probably hear them mention like, oh, she's probably like burst some blood vessels. Like you should check for head injuries, that kind of thing. Um. Yeah. So you get to the hospital, and um, like they wheel you into the emergency room like as soon as you get there like as soon as you get in the building like your mom is there waiting for you with the doctors and like runs alongside like your stretcher um and as soon as she sees you she's like okay you're alive thank god stephanie are you okay i'm here um you're gonna be okay they're gonna take care of you okay i'm here sweetheart and she like takes your hand and uh like is going with you into the emergency room. She's just happy to see her mom. Kind of tunes out everything at this point, I think. I mean, I logistically, does she need surgery? It's broken ribs and mm, they can't really, the, you can't do anything about they that. They can't do anything about no, that. No, like, you they just can't, have to. But they definitely need to like clean up like the wounds, though. Could, like a ton of wind yeah. irrigation. Need stitches, probably. 
but they probably so they probably won't keep you longer than overnight yeah um but yeah so they uh they kind of they do sort of bar you from like going with caesar uh as like stephanie's mom just kind of like replaces you um and uh yeah you're kind of free to go i guess me i am yeah yeah i mean because they're not gonna let you in the room anymore (laughs) Lucian will probably walk into the lobby at that point anyways because he's later <laughs> speaking of wounds doesn't Lucian still have like snake bites yeah oh uh, theoretically <laughs> Lucian will probably yeah walk in and look at Caesar just doing this a little bit <laughs> oh my god you're not okay either hi 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 no I'm chilling it's fine Mm, I wouldn't call that chilling. Oh, uh, I don't want to get it fixed. I fucking hate hospital. Okay, can I, can, can we go, I, I don't know yeah. if I'm talking to Lucian or, yeah, but can we go out to my car and just, would I have, can I have a first aid kit? I feel like Caesar would. I really do. <laughs> Like okay. in his car, I mean, if you like would for have one in your car. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then great. He's very prepared. Then yeah. cool. Then yeah, that's that sounds good. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go out to my car. Cool. Yeah, you go out to the car. Um, yeah, you can help patch up Lucian, like in in uh, with the first aid kit in your car. Um, this would count as uh healing and if someone else is there with you tending to your wounds delicately and intimately and perhaps with erotic subtext you can heal an additional harm so uh with if caesar is helping lucian uh patch himself up uh you can heal you can heal two harm i got one harm it's not that bad cool then you can yeah erase that harm can um would this help with the condition drain mm, i'm gonna say this has been the the drained condition is less about being physically injured and more just about being tired and exhausted from a really draining experience um, it's a nap. so no um so where did Starfire, Cassie, and Eden go. Good ass question. Um, Morgan's? I imagine Morgan's, but I think probably partway through, we should take a quick break to talk about what we're going to say and do, maybe, you know, just safe clearing in the woods somewhere, maybe. Sure. And Cassie can't speak, so. uh... Yeah, I mean, Cassie will pull over. (laughs) Okay, as, <laughs> drifts to a stop at some point starfire like tugged gently on the chain like hey hey, hey let's let's stop for a sec okay not in. right it hops hops down helps eden down and then okay so what is the plan because we cannot stay here and i don't know how we're gonna sneak you through a town yeah my house is kind of uh Unavailable. Says so mine, but mm, have you met my aunt? I don't, no. Morgan, she, she's she's good. We can. Does she know about? Yeah. All yeah. of this. Okay. Good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, she does magic. So. Yeah. Oh. Um. Fun. Yeah. Fun. Um. We could go there. I don't really have any sure. better ideas. Maybe does she just... need to know? about the whole Stephanie situation, or should we not say anything about that? I think I mentioned a witch at some point. I don't know if I specified who. Um, She's usually pretty good about not asking questions if I don't offer answers, so. So then we don't need to say anything. Just say we got into an altercation. 
You stay overnight? Everything's, yeah. Do you need to call your family? Oh, probably, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, do, do that, do that. I'll do it at Morgan's. Not like in the middle of the woods where signal is so, probably. Yeah, 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 okay. Okay, are you, are you hurt, Eden? Me? No, I'm fine. Okay. You're hurt, though. I'm not that hurt. Cassie, are you, how's, how's, how's Cassie looking? Uh, while this conversation's happening, Cassie has been pacing around the clearing, like, looking in the woods, not paying much attention, but I think he, he looks mostly fine, but he is, I think there's probably parts in his fur that still show where, like, the chain wrapped around him earlier, so, like, like, maybe not looking too great for wear, but he's, he's fine, it's just that, just a chain. Get out of here then. Yeah. Cass, you ready? Yeah. He 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 nods and gets down so they can climb back on. Jumps on, helps Eden up. Mm-hmm. All right. Morgan. And Cassie takes off. You guys head to Morgan's cabin. Um, when you arrive, she's actually outside already. Uh, go around so the back. Should- Maybe, okay, perhaps, yeah. not the roadside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like out shoveling her driveway. Um, has like a thick blue scarf around her neck and uh, a like hand knitted hat. Um, and uh, as you guys like come up, her eyes just widen and she like toss, like just sticks the shovel in the snow and uh, like opens the door and lets you all inside, but puts a hand up and says, sorry. Um, Cassie, uh, okay, I you can't come in the house. She, 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 she can she, stay on the porch. He, he, has, he has to come inside, please. Okay, okay. I will clean. Here. I will vacuum for you, please. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. That's Eden. Okay. They'll help. Hi. We'll va- yeah. we, will, we will vacuum. Okay. I will okay. explain everything. I mean, Maybe the problem is Let's... more the space, but okay. Uh, yeah, you have to like fucking squeeze to get in the door. Um, and Morgan just like looks at uh, Eden and says, "There's the shoes off, household." So. Oh yeah, I take my shoes off at my own Starfire's house. Starfire's already kicked yours off. <laughs> okay, and um, she like pulls you into the. Uh, she probably like, takes you in the in the back door, which leads just straight into the kitchen. So. Uh, Kathy doesn't get on the carpet um, and just says, okay. Um, Starfire slams the back door, like bolts it and like just kind of does a quick check of the windows, turns back around. Okay, I'm going to go grab the first aid kit and then um, oh, yeah. can you- Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get like a wet towel. You know, no, you just stay here. I know where everything is, and I'll go get everything. Oh, um, okay. If you want to be helpful, you can put some water water on the stove to heat up. Uh, teapots in the cupboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she heads upstairs to, like, go grab a first aid kit. Cassie's just going to try his very best not to knock anything over. And, um, we'll, like, he, 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 he doesn't have, he probably doesn't have enough space to, but he'll make an attempt to, like, circle and, like, sit down on the ground. Starfire will sit next to Cassie and like let him put his head in her lap if he wants to. Just like hunker down, take up a small, small amount of space. Eden will make tea. <laughs> uh, yeah, your aunt comes back downstairs with a first aid kit um, and some towels that uh, she puts down like next to Cassie uh, because you have tracked a bunch of snow into the house that is now melting. And um, she just immediately starts to like patch up your wounds, Starfire, and like gets a like cloth and like alcohol, like rubbing alcohol to like uh, clean it, the snake bite. Um, And just like immediately starts patching you up. And as she does so, says, um, so wanna tell me what happened? Uh, here, just generally speaking, 
Um, as much as possible, please. Okay. Our kind of looks at Eden and looks at Cassie. We were in the woods. Um, situ situation. Remember the witch I was telling you about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, little situation in the woods. Police are potentially there now. Uh, and we're informed that it was a wolf attack. So we left and Cassie is stuck. And this is Eden who came to help. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The snake. Yeah, no, the, um, the snake people, <laughs> they can turn into snakes. An exciting turn of events. That was interesting. Yeah, frankly, I'm not entirely sure how to explain it, but... The long and short of it is we... It was, there was an altercation. That's kind of it. Everything's, for better or for worse, solved now? I mean, solved is a strong word. All I parties have... Mitigated. Yeah, mitigated. Temporarily and precariously. <laughs> okay. And what happened to the snake? She left. They yeah. they went. They left. I am Yeah, we shooed the snake off. Oh, um Morgan. She uh does know some things not necessarily that I told her but they found out some certain things about me and the prophecy so just so we're all on the same ground of who knows what okay um do not tell my mother please <laughs> absolutely not she would kill me so what do you want to do? I can fix you up. I can fix up your friend. Do you just want to hang out here, blame both for a while? Either they have to hurt someone or they're stuck in wolf until morning, so. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, I mean, you want free to stay, but and she like looks at Cassie. You can't go on the carpet, and she sort of like looks at you, Starfire, and like says in sort of like a low voice, like, I mean, she can't get around Cassie hearing, but uh, to like not let Eden hear and just say, um, how much do you want me to say in front of your friends? Do you want to talk? somewhere else starfire looks back up at her and we're usually there's a lot of like fire and anger and like oh, haha i'm keeping things to myself and i'm the stubborn little bastard it is just defeat i don't know it doesn't really matter so okay well I won't say anything without the go-ahead from you. You can say anything. It's fine. She'll just say, to what degree do the Strisciantes know about what happened, about you? What happened between you I and whipped out Sylvia. the chain and wrapped it around her and it burned her. So. Why was she there? What Stephanie I mean, Chaplin's attack dog? Okay, yeah, so it only wasn't... Only be that, though. She's not. It wasn't an, any... It wasn't targeted at you. She picked up a book when she left. I didn't see what was on it. 
was first targeted at Lucian. Mostly Lucian. Okay. For hurting Chaplin. Lucian hurt Chaplin, so Stephanie hurt, so Sylvia hurt Lucian and then turned around to her. It was a whole. And then thing. Starfire tried to get Sylvia okay. off Lucian. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good because. I mean, it's not a great, it's not, the margin of error isn't great here, but that I'm, we can assume that they don't know about you and your part to play in this. And that's to Starfire. So if this was just happenstance that you got into a fight, obviously, We've shown a little bit of our hand, but they don't know everything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't. Hey, that's okay. Things, there's still time. We can deal with this. Do you guys want lunch? What time is it? Oh, it's God. like eleven thirty. <laughs> oh my God, um, Cassie, what do you eat when you're a wolf? He like he looks up from Starfire's lap and he just kind of does like a. If a wolf can shrug, he shrugs. <laughs> uh, Morgan just says, "Well, uh, I have." some meat in the fridge. Do you want it raw or cooked? Uh, Nod had once for raw and twice for cooked, buddy. I could also make you just a, I, I have sandwich S- stuff. Do you just sandwich. want a sandwich? You think you, think, you, think you can eat bread? Like Dogs just, can eat bread. Yeah, but dogs aren't supposed to eat bread. I mean, it's just, bread is just fatty for dogs. It's there's no nutritional value but like i can don't no grapes though yeah Cass. no grapes okay Okay. no grapes no chocolate yeah meat i guess maybe we can put the tea in like tea in like a bowl situation (laughs) (laughs) i'm trying to give a werewolf tea in a bowl (laughs) Making it some, <laughs> we're making some chamomile tea, some calming. Okay, um, I'll I'll see what I can whip up. Uh, sandwiches for the two of you, though. Is that good? Sure. Okay. Uh, are I, are you vegetarian? Um, just kosher. Okay, I've got turkey. Cool. Sick. Uh. Alrighty. And yeah, so she makes some sandwiches for both of you um, and hands you uh, turkey sandwiches, no cheese for Eden. And um, yeah, like gives, I don't, she makes just like two extra sandwiches that just have bread and meat for for Cassie, she really is kind of out of her element with this one. <laughs> I do pour some tea in a bowl and awkwardly walk it over to Cassie and like put it on the ground. Like, dude, I don't forget her. What I- this was stupid and <laughs> just walks away. <laughs> this is so. This is so domestic. I love yeah. this. Just really quick, do you guys communicate your location? And yes as soon as too. we're in a good spot and i i think i wait and i text first to illusion okay. like hey where are you at i text caesar as well why don't we just make a fucking group chat seeing as we are all now inextricably involved in this fine uh, i have caesar's number because i sell him cigarettes so <laughs> i will make <laughs> real <laughs> <laughs> oh true starfire so i make a group chat wait who's in the group is it everyone 
all the PCs except Stephanie and Sylvia, or is it all the I PCs think so. except Sylvia? Or okay, uh, okay. I think I add Cassie. I add. Uh, I almost just said Quinn too. I add Cassie. I add Eden. I add Caesar and Lucian, and then I look at Eden like, "Am I supposed to add Chaplin to this?" <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Probably. Yeah, no, actually, second thought, that's a horrible idea. Uh, and I, I don't open know up. if any of us like her that much. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, and I open up my phone and I text just, hey. And then there's a really long pause and a lot of typing symbol and then untyping symbol and then typing symbol and then untyping symbol. And then you get safe at Morgan's, where are you at? Uh, response with, uh, the hospital. Lovely. <laughs> do you want us to come over? Question mark, send. Morgan, do we want more people to come over? Because Lucian, and have you met, you haven't met Caesar, Lucian's boyfriend, but if, just don't. That's Wait, how did new. you catch on that's, to the vibe? Whoa, that's new. Wait. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. Him. Yeah. For him. Yeah. We're, we're, don't, maybe I don't. I thought that would I'm take not, a lot longer. I did too. I, but the, you know, I get the glass is just so <laughs> thin it's paper thin it's so transparent it's, and i feel like paper... sometimes <laughs> it's as thin so... as a shirt and then sometimes should he gets I windex be... and then he just like <laughs> should i be congratulatory or should no I just, you know like... i think just maybe i think that was more context for you i don't think okay, he's explicitly okay. Okay, okay. Just so you know, you don't make like any insinuations that might, just so you, we're it, like, it's a, it. th- it's definitely a thing, but we're just okay. not talking about it until he mentions it. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Okay, noted, noted. Um, I mean, yeah, they can come over. Do they also want lunch? <laughs> There's a pause. I open up my phone. Eden, Eden, do, you, do you guys do you want, want lunch? lunch? We send at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Lucian looks at Caesar. Do we want lunch? lunch? <laughs> I mean, I haven't eaten. Do you want lunch from your friends, Morgan? What? Or <laughs> what do you want to do, Caesar? Oh, because hey, hey, they could totally be your friends too. And um, you know, I don't know. Maybe if we go together, that I can, you know, I don't know introduce you to them and or with something is that stupid i don't i mean i it's not stupid like yeah are your so friend we, what are we yeah um lucian's like real nervous looking oh um, i don't know um i don't know i you know maybe i uh i i could i don't know um I could I could just be like yeah hey uh I sure would you know like when we get there I'm like oh my god lunch this sounds really cool and then be like hey Morgan hey everyone this is Caesar uh he you know I know these people you don't have to introduce no who I know I but am. you don't know Morgan and then it could be like a thing where like you know you know where where it's like it it, it where where like you know Morgan comes to the door and then we're both at the door and then um in, in instead of just being like hey this is Caesar uh and then not saying anything it could be like hey this is Caesar he's my boyfriend you know like I mean, we could not do that or or i could not do that if you didn't want me to do if you didn't i don't have can to do i that. lean in and kiss him <laughs> yeah. yes or if you want me to do the talking i can introduce you as my boyfriend whichever way works you know morgan i don't yeah. well can- I, yeah, yeah, I know the people but, in there, so I'll, I'll do the, sure. yeah, sure, I'll do the uh-huh. You, you're Sounds... very good at it so far. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying here. No, it's, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. It'll, it'll, it'll be all right. Yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, it'll be all right. 
Okay. Well, you're, I assume you don't want me driving back. <laughs> no, yeah, I will. Your car. I will drive. I will drive you. Do you want to, do you want to, uh, do you want to take a nap or something? You look. Yeah, I'll take a nap. You look fucked. You look fucked. Okay. When we get to Morgan's, then I can take a nap. Okay. I am stealing the ox cord, though. It's mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you guys head to Morgan's. Um, meanwhile, Sylvia, you went back to the tree. And then did you go home? Yeah. Okay. Sylvia went back to the tree purely for like convenience of I know how to get out of here because that's the mm-hmm. way I came. And then there's my motorcycle. Yeah. And then we go home. Cool. Um, when you get home, your family is uh still there. Your mom's probably like having lunch in the kitchen. Um and uh, do you like go and talk to them or do you just like head up to your room? Well, I guess as the door opens, your mom calls out to you and, so, well, and just says, hello? Yeah, I'm home. Aren't you supposed to be at school? I don't really see a point today. Uh, come in here. She'll walk into the kitchen. And sees that you are like bloody puncture wounds bleeding from the neck yeah (laughs) and she says oh my god what happened to you uh i was looking into blackwell and i found this weird tree like a wolf and chains or something in it um i got this book and she'll like put the book on the kitchen counter okay (laughs) let me get you some band-aids and we'll talk, okay? I am. Uh, she heads to like the bathroom, grabs a first aid kit, um, comes back, starts like wiping the blood off your neck and putting like gauze there. And as she does so, uh, she says, all right, sweetheart, the thing with, Blackwell. So our family is descended from, you know, an old Nordic god. And the thing is, there's this family uh, descended from another Nordic god. And uh, they've been trying to free him from, you know, the sort of extra dimensional prison that he's trapped in until and you know in freeing him they'll start the end of the world um but Ragnarok isn't a complete destruction all right it's a rebirth a rebuilding of the world And where our family comes in is that, well, when Ragnarok starts, Jormungandr, our ancestor, our god, is also similarly freed. So I've been looking into Blackwell because we need to help them. Okay. Um, it was in the book where the thing was said yeah yeah okay well I found something in the book then that could help and Sylvia will like go to the page and show their mom she reads it and says um Unfortunately, up until this point, uh, our two families have kind of, well, the descendants of Fenris and Jormungandr, we kind of avoid each other. Uh, Not for any particular reason, we just, you know, we keep to ourselves. I don't know too much about this 
prophecy, but I mean, if I had to guess, this means that they free Fenris. I mean, they've been trying to do it for years and they've never done it. So that's why I figured, hey, why not actually, if, you know, why not get the most competent fucking mob family this side of the, uh, this side of the continent on their side and then we can maybe actually help them get something fucking done. But if I, so if I had to guess, this means Blood of the Wolf, Blackwells. Awoken their doom, probably talking about Ragnarok or something that leads to them starting Ragnarok. Yeah. Sounds good. Who who did this to you? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I just like, I bit someone and then like I bled like where I bit them, but on me, I don't know. The fuck? Who? Give me a name. Just some spoiled little dies boy. Motion master. She narrows her eyes and says, well, ain't that fortunate because I, I have a meeting with his father tonight, so. Oh. Oh, we'll have some words. Mind if I come along? Like, what's the meeting about? Well, Arthur Astor and his business partner have something to discuss with me, apparently. But you're old enough. You're showing a little initiative. Yeah, you can come along. Cool. All right. Well, are you going back to school? I mean, is there a reason to? That's up to you. I think I'm just going to go take a nap. I'm kind of tired. Alrighty. She like gives you a pat on the cheek before you go and says, um, you know, I'm proud of you. You've done a good job today. Sophia's been like straight faced this whole time and is going to get like a little smile. Just say, thanks. And then go upstairs. I think Sylvia will just like leave the book down there for her mom to go through. Cool. So question harm wise. Mm-hmm. Yes. She tended to the neck wounds. Yeah. You know, um, I would count I would count your mom helping you, um, like platonically, obviously, but that definitely counts for like having someone assist you. So you can uh, erase two harm. Okay. Um the same goes for uh, Starfire and Morgan. Um, I don't know how much harm Starfire you took, but you can erase two. I'm assuming Stephanie's in the hospital so she can erase her harm as well. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, did you take any harm, Cassie? How much harm did you take? One from Starfire's chain. Okay, cool. Morgan does um, heal you and... Uh, she actually like uses a little bit of magic to do it um, instead of like trying to put a bandage on your fur. Um, and so you can erase your harm as well. Yeah. While they're all doing that, Eden's <clears throat> going to step out of the house and call his mom. Um, it rings a couple times, and then she picks up and says, Eden, is, is, some, is this an emergency? Is something going on? Oh, no, it's, it's fine. I just, um, one of my friends wasn't feeling well, so I had to, I was going, I helped them out and, you know, drove them uh, back home and <laughs> stuff, but I'm probably going to be staying with them for tonight uh okay it is a school night yeah i i I can get it handled we got we got uh passes and everything out so you know teachers now okay all right uh if if you've got it taken care of and you are at school tomorrow that's fine with me yeah, I'll be uh, there. 
Text your father and let him know. Yeah. Of course. Thanks, Mom. Yep. Love you. Love you, too. She hangs up. Eden will text his father. And then we'll text his brother. Okay. And we'll just plainly just say, I know today was a lot. If you need to talk about it, call me after school. Uh, God, I'm trying to remember what memes were in, in like 2016, 2017. Um, he sends you like, uh, the fucking Pepe the Frog, but like giving a thumbs up and just says, okay, LOL. (laughs) Sick. Cool. Uh, yeah, so Lu- Lucian and Caesar did go to Morgan's. They show up, you guys show up, like, maybe, like, five minutes after Eden, like, makes their phone calls. Um, um, Can I text Cora really quickly? Yeah. I just want to text Cora. Hey, dude. When are we clothes swapping? Send. Uh, she texts back, this weekend question mark also where are you lol (laughs) a car send um and and also uh weekend sounds good have you picked out a dress yet question mark uh she says uh no my mom wants to go with me to pick one um also, then she sends like a second text and just says, um, should I get your homework for you? Are you coming back to school? Are you coming to school today? Uh, sends, mm, probably not coming back to school today. That would be so very kind of you. You don't have to, but that would be nice. She just sends back like a sunglasses emoji and says, LOL, Okay. Uh, And then she also follows back. She sends another text and just says, "Um, I'm thinking about cutting all my hair off. Thoughts? Lucian just sends back, yes, 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 in all caps. Uh, And then it's it's probably like, you can borrow my, my like, fancy ass hair products if you want. I got good mousse and pomade send. Why are you looking fresh for prom? (laughs) (laughs) She just says, awesome. We'll, uh, uh, we'll let you know. Great. And Lucian, Lucian sends a smiley face and then smiles to himself and puts his phone away. Cool. Yeah, you guys show up at Morgan's house. Um, and uh, she like gets the door for you and just says, hey, Lucian. And... Uh, hey, Morgan. Uh, it's me again. Um, this is yeah, Caesar. Good to see you. Caesar, mm-hmm. nice to meet Hi. you. Nice to meet you. Uh yeah, um uh he's my boyfriend. That's so Starfire great. chokes on her drink in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he Morgan almost <laughs> chops his cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Morgan just like immediately goes that's so great and she gives you a hug and just says i'm so proud of you um cool and awesome nice to meet you caesar i'm uh she like holds out her hand and says to like shake and says uh i'm starfire's aunt morgan miller um hi yeah hi miss miller it's uh great to meet you yeah uh I'm gonna assume that you know what's going on and that I can let you in the house to see uh, the wolf. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They're fine. Mm-hmm. They're. Mm-hmm. Lucian's shaking. Cool. Can we get lunch? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I made some sandwiches. Uh, make you- eye contact with Starfire. <laughs> I make eye contact <laughs> dead back with you. <laughs> Just. <laughs> uh, do you guys want. Anything to drink? We've got tea, water. I've got Coke, Diet Coke. I actually used most of the tea, but there's some left in the. Okay. Well, yeah. we can make more. I kind of gave the wolf some tea. Lucian, do you want tea? 
Um, sh- uh, yeah, sure. Tea would, mm-hmm, tea. Okay, uh, yeah, you guys get lunch together, and uh, Morgan, like, invites you all to sit at the table in the dining room, which is, like, just off the kitchen, so Cassie can, like, see and be privy to the conversation. It's like Clifford the Big Red Dog at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Starfire has never looked this viscerally uncomfortable, but not in a bad way. And an, I am incredibly awkward around this group of people who are all in my aunt's house and also is like gl- glaring in the siblings' way at Lucian. Oh, you did you did you have something you wanted to, to mention to the rest of us? Kind of, you know, that kind of expression. Mm. Just- <laughs> Eden's making that same expression, but at Caesar. Prolonged eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> Lucian just sits down very nicely and politely. <laughs> Starfire makes eye contact with Wolf Cassie. <laughs> I mean, he looks, but he's mostly focused on his tea. Well, lovely to see everybody here. So are you planning on staying the night? what <laughs> i don't have a lot of bedrooms i'll say that right now yeah no there's a there's a couch we could lay on the couch i i, I have places to be this evening so i'm gonna um like what like what places that you need to be because if you were going to track practice after this i might kill you <laughs> Something um, tells me she's being honest. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not track practice. It's um you know, um I all kind of always need to be home for dinner. Dinner. Know, so dinner. Okay. Yeah. So what is the what's the plan? What's the plan, y'all? Because we do attend school with Stephanie Chaplin. And Sylvia Sershante, so. Well, Stephanie may be out of commission. We could start a rumor. I, well, I mean, not a rumor. We could just say that she was, she hit a bear on her way to school. I think, I don't want to make a villain of her viciousness. Let's. I think she's made a villain of herself. Oh, and she has probably, fully. I just yeah. We don't I, need to like add on to it at this point. I'm just I, saying. Yeah. I don't think we need to add to it. No, I'm just. I think yeah. she's she's good. Just she's got yeah. it. Just say yeah. I don't. I wouldn't. I feel like a bear attack is fine. Yeah. It's not. It's not. You know. It's not a. That's not a villainizing thing to say about someone. <laughs> It's just a bad thing that happened to someone, you know. Sylvia, on the other hand, may be a problem. Maybe. Maybe. Do I, wait, Catherine, do I know that the Strisciantes are business partners with my dad at all? Uh, do I know that? Would I know? Would I have seen? No, and also I will say that the the implication from Steph from Sylvia's mom is that uh, this is a new thing. Uh, she she okay. is saying that he there she's going to meet with Arthur Astor and his current business partner. Cool. Do I know who the? Uh, do I know the answer to this? Right? Am I th- the person who I'm thinking of? Am I right about that? So you know that your uh, dad. Um, well, okay. When you moved to town, uh, you and your dad didn't know a lot of people, but um, the Mitchells invited you to dinner quite a few times, and they still do. And um, <gasps> you know that your dad oh, and no. Cora's dad Ow! work together. Oh, oh. oh god no fuck no piss and no shit jesus okay so yeah are we this is lucian speaking um are we so 
Is there like, because I, again, I know, I feel like I know none of the details, but it feels as though there's sort of like an impending doom um, of some kind. And are we on the, the track of, 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 of stopping the impending doom? Or are we on the track of, of sort of like helping the impending doom uh, do the doom thing? Yeah, the first, the first one. Okay, cool. The first one. Does that mean Sylvia's trying to doom us all? Yes, that does mean Sylvia would be doing the latter, yes. Cool. Lucian, can we go outside for a second? I think I owe you specifically an explanation. Okay. Starfire walks out and just keeps walking past the back door, out the, out like down the steps into the snow and takes out her phone, opens Spotify or whatever the equivalent and hits play on a waltz because she and Lucian are not good at talking but they are quite good at dancing. And that is sometimes a better way to tell him things. So she turns it on and she waits. Lucian will, because he's definitely gone to many fancy parties and probably got taught how to waltz ages ago, uh, does a very officious bow and holds out his hand. Starfire takes lead, not follow. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Naturally. (laughs) And starts dancing. And she starts dancing out of sync. She doesn't dance to the rhythm. Does he follow or does he pull her back on the beat? Probably pulls her back on the beat, but gives her a weird look. Like, (laughs) why are we not dancing to the music? (laughs) She kind of gives him an almost like knowing smile and will start to dance on the beat. Very basic box step to start out with. Just kind of incredibly simple waltz. And goes... My family is descended from this very, very long line of Scandinavian people. Go far enough back, and it's tied to the gods. You ever heard stories about it, or are you starting square one? Uh, well, which pantheon are we talking about? Also, I'm pretty sure there's only one god. Different pantheon, different pantheon, different set of beliefs. You know, Odin, Thor. Oh, we're talking Norse? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Starfire breaks the box up and starts moving a little bit differently, like swinging him around. They're now kind of going in a bit of a circle. Norse legend believes that the world is fated to be destroyed in this big world ending event. Ragnarok. And Ragnarok is the end, but it's also the beginning. And most people believe that it happened a long time ago, but the truth is that it hasn't happened yet, or at least that it is fated to happen again. And when it came around the first time, the gods did a whole lot of stuff to prevent it, because there's except 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 this is one god. His name is Loki. He's kind of the you know, the trickster god, right? The one who kind of gets in there, messes everything up just a little bit, but, you know, still one of them, just causing problems as, as he would. And he has three children, a snake, a terrifying little undead girl, and a wolf, Fenris. And at this point, Starfire, takes Lucian and spins him around. They're in a little bit of a different step pattern now. And when Loki had his children, the gods were terrified because they'd never seen anything like quite this awful before because wolves and snakes and terrifying little undead girls, those those were a little more than they could handle. So they took Jormungandr and they put him in the sea. And they took the girl named Hel and they brought her to the underworld where she reigns over all the souls that didn't make it to Valhalla. But the wolf, 
they raised the wolf like one of their own, and he grew up hunting in the hall alongside one of the gods until he got too big and too powerful. And then one day they decided that they were afraid of him. And so they offered to play a game with him. And Starfire just breaks the little kind of spin situation that she's got going and now carries them into like open breaks and steps so they're only holding one hand now they're taking different set of steps and this wolf agreed to play the game because these are the people that raised him and so they had the strongest chain they could possibly fathom made and they bound the wolf in it and they told him to break it and he did So they made a stronger one and they asked him to try and break it again and he did and this kept going on and on and on until they got a bunch of weird ass ingredients and made this really thin little chain and they bound him with it and at this point you know Fenris was catching on to them because i don't know how many times they thought they could play this game with him before that he figured it out but it wasn't that many and so he offered some sort of deal that he would do it if one of the gods put their hand out in front of his mouth and if they didn't let him go if he couldn't break it he would bite their hand off and so they wrapped him in the chain and he couldn't break it and they didn't let him go they never have he bit the god's hand off and stays bound by the chain for the rest of eternity and Ragnarok is supposed to happen when he finally breaks it. And Starfire now will bring Lucian back, but normally in a waltz, you step like in between your partner's feet or like, you know, there's, you're dancing pretty close. Starfire steps outside partner. So she is, they're now like, their like foot tracks are parallel, but not in alignment. And she says, And the king of the gods declared that, you know, he would keep them all bound forever and do everything that he possibly could to prevent Ragnarok. And somehow this cycle of trying to prevent people from escaping and binding people and hoping that no one breaks free of their chains has lasted for centuries. Somewhere way back, Odin, the king of the gods is my ancestor. I'm a Valkyrie. And there is a prophecy that foretells the Valkyries descended from Odin and the descendants of Fenris the Wolf. Something like every, I don't know, century. It happens a few times. They battle on something called the Night of Revel and either the wolf dies or the world is consumed, but somehow neither of those conditions have been met yet. And usually either Fenris's descendant dies or Odin's descendant dies, but most often they both do. And it just goes on and on and on. That's who I am. And there isn't anything I can do about it. Lucian keeps dancing, lets that truth sit in the mo- in the air just for a little bit more and then brings her back in for a more like slows the waltz down a little bit moves the steps and moves them in a circle very slowly Starfire switch- switches so he's taking the leap I don't have as many secrets as you do I'd say you know most things about me so I feel badly that I can't trade something as big as what you just gave me but I'm learning to take gifts from my friends so thank you for sharing you're welcome now I'm not sure how much I was prepared to figure out that those gods exist, but all right. Um. (laughs) There's always multiple truths. Just kind of a matter of which one you believe in. Ain't it just? (sighs) 
Well, I just have a small truth that I've been practicing saying to people and I feel like I'd want you to know, so. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't get easier, does it? <laughs> um, you know how I kept going after Luna? Yeah. So, we share something. Um, uh, we both don't have mothers. And I know that you already sort of know that, but... Um, I, ne I never really had one, so... So, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Maybe she's related to Fenris. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe that's something. But, um, no. It's me. <laughs> well, I couldn't ask her if I wanted to. Um, but, Thank you for telling me. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you more about it another time, but I just wanted to say it. It's not a small truth, Lucian. It matters to you. Nothing that matters to you is small. Oh, God, I feel like I've been fucking everything up with you recently and I'm <sighs> it's okay I do it habitually to myself star we're just <laughs> we are too similar <laughs> and <laughs> it gets us angry at each other more often than not <laughs> because we are too damn similar <laughs> And um, it's it's hard when when that's the way it is. But I just I don't know what this night of revels is. I don't know what ever bullshit is. But if you need me, I will be there. And this insane goddamn fight that you are taking on, I will help you with. I'm in your corner. And that scares me so much. That scares me so much. Yeah. And I'm just gonna like lean in a little more just like, and just say like, well, you can't get rid of me. No matter how much you try. I know you want to. <laughs> Desperately. <laughs> he twirls her. <laughs> and then pulls her back in. You know I do a lot of stupid shit. <laughs> Um, no, no, I hadn't noticed that one. Speaking of which, carbon monoxide, if anyone asks, is a thing that was at the diner we were at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... God, I really do need to... Mm, I just want... Fucking... I think I just want to live somewhere. <laughs> is that stupid? I just want to live somewhere. I don't... <laughs> Yeah, no, where? Tell me about it. People. No, tell me about wanna, it. Where? Oh. Uh, you honestly God want to know? <laughs> I asked. I want like a little cabin in Appalachia so bad. So bad. What Just a little... Like? It's like, it's like in between. It's not a valley because there, there is a valley, but it's like, it's in between these two rocks and it looks at the valley. But there's, there's lots of creeks, too. And I think I miss living near where creeks are. So I'd like one of those. As long as I have a room with, like, a desk. I think that's... What are you going to do with the desk? Are you going to write? Oh, it's so stupid. No, no, it's so stupid. Stop mm -hmm. you. It's so stupid. It's dumb. Oh, it's I seem to remember no. about three minutes ago you mentioned you owed me a secret. <laughs> oh, but it's so dumb. <laughs> So, you know, I'm, I really like British lit. No, I've never noticed seeing I, I, you voraciously read through your books at lunch. <laughs> never tipped me off. I just pretended I didn't Look, notice. okay, I'm going to say this once. Um, I really like writing analysis papers just for fun of them. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. the, it's, the, it's, it's so bad. It's, and they're not even... They're pretty fine. Um, they're fine. I just like talking about them sometimes. And more like mapping them out. Anyways, it's a whole thing. But uh, what? regardless, what I was trying to say, um, I may be doing something kind of stupid. 
tonight, but it's the last stupid thing I'm ever gonna do. So, and maybe not the last stupid thing, but of the big things that I I <laughs> I don't want to do anything else after this. Um, but I I don't. <sighs> I have to do. I want to trust you, so. Okay. Okay. Just. I hope you get your cabin in Appalachia with creeks nearby and a desk so you can write your many, many analytical papers. Well, you're going to get a future too. So don't even worry about it. If I can, you sure as hell can. We'll work on it. Okay. We'll work on our futures together then. Yeah. All right. I think he smiles really brightly and widely and then uh, uh, spins her out and then spins her back in and then dips her and then pulls her back up in a really fancy move because he just wants to show off that he really knows how to dance. (laughs) Oh, buddy, be glad I didn't put on a Viennese waltz. We could be doing so much worse. (sighs) And then he just smiles and then, yeah, and then I think he hugs Starfire. That's it. (laughs) a place to end, I think. This episode featured Catherine Rarett as the Master of Ceremonies, Percival Walter as Lucian Astor, Quinn Borzen as Eden Grace, Arcadia Reeves as Cassie Rodriguez, Casey Fleming as Starfire Miller, Karina Revia as Cesar Rodriguez Reyes, Victoria Nielsen as Sylvia Striciante, and Saffron Heftigaub as Stephanie Chaplin. The Valkyrie Cycle is co-directed by Catherine Rarett and Saffron Heftigaub and produced by Casey Fleming. This season's editing team includes Catherine Rarett, Karina Revia, Casey Fleming, Sola Heftigaub, and Saffron Heftigaub. Music for the Valkyrie Cycle was composed by Haley Adams and Quinn Borison. Art was created by Arcadia Reeves. And our social media team is run by Fabiola Liano. Additional sound effects are sourced from freesound.org and zapsplat.com under the Creative Commons Attribution License. For a full list of credits, please visit our website at midnightceremoniesmedia.com. Again, that's midnightceremoniesmedia.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to leave us a review and tell your friends, as word of mouth is one of the best ways to support the show. We appreciate all your support, and thank you so much for listening. Proud member of the Rainbow Roll Network. Rainbow Roll. Our stories are our voices.